Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is the troubleshooting of a furnace control board. This is out of a single speed, 90% efficient carrier Bryant Payne unit, and uh, we're just going over how to know if the board is bad. If the board is blamed, ten, tends to be blamed more often than it should be, and it's probably one of the components in the furnace that would break, say, the least, the least times out of, uh, compared to any other um, component in the, in the furnace. Like the capacitor is usually the first things that go in the furnace. You have the, the hot surface igniter, that's usually the second item to go. Sometimes those are reversed, sometimes it is the hot surface igniter first, then the capacitor. Then after that it could be a gas valve, it could be a blower motor, um, it could be an inducer motor, it could be any of those items. It could be the thermostat. So I just want to go over uh, just a how to definitely tell if the if the board is bad. All right, so here we go. So first things first, uh, if we were to start the sequence of operation for heat, we would need the 24 volt signal for coming from R through the thermostat and back to W, and you can confirm that it has that heat call by putting your multimeter probes on common and W. You'll get anywhere from 24 to 28 and a half uh, volts AC. Once that occurs, then the first thing that's going to happen is the inducer motor is going to turn on, which is right over here. You see that you have three taps right here. You have one hot, one common, and one ground. So you can take your probes over there and check for 120 volts going to the inducer motor. After the inducer motor is running, uh, the pressure switch will close. And on this unit, um, it's these wires right here, those two wires. So to tell if your pressure switch is closed, what you can do is you can take a voltage reading from common into the orange wire to see if you have 24 volts and into your yellow wire to make sure you have 24 volts. One's the 24 volt signal going out, the other one will be the 24 volt signal coming back in the pressure switch. It's just connecting or disconnecting um, the power. It's normally open, so if the inducer motor is not on, this pressure switch will not be closed and that means you're not going to have 24 volts um, on the one coming back. So once again, first thing, inducer motor turns on, pressure switch closes, sending the 24 volt signal back to the wiring harness. Regardless of whether you have a block wiring harness or you have a straight wiring harness, then the next thing that happens is the hot surface igniter right here. Uh, the hot surface igniter is powered with 120 volts, one hot, one common, and you can put your probes right into the connector uh, to see if you have 120 volts there. If the uh, power was off and the hot surface igniter was disconnected, you could take a resistance reading of the hot surface igniter. It's typically going to be somewhere around 40 to 60 ohms of resistance. But anyway, so that's the third step in the sequence of operation. After the hot surface igniter is powered for about seven seconds or so on the carrier uh, Bryant pain boards, that's about how long they're powered for, then the gas valve is going to open. The gas valve is actually this blue wire right here. That's your 24 volts going out, and then this is your common slash ground on your gas valve. All right, that's going to power for three seconds, and then it's going to shut off if it does not have a, a uh, flame rectification signal, okay? But it will stay on if it receives, if the board here receives a DC microamp reading due to the flame rectification process. You have the uh, 90 to 110 volts coming on this wire to the flame rod at all times. This is your flame sensor rod. So this is connected to that wire right there, all right? And this will be immersed in the flame and the voltage will go from there through the flame to the burner retention head. We have 90 to 110 volts going into uh, the combustion chamber right in front of the burners and it's always sensing just in case to make sure that there's not a fire there basically. All right. <clears throat> During the when the gas valve opens the flame is going to travel across the, the face of the burners over to the flame rod. The 90 to 110 volts is going to go through the flame into the burner retention head which is the ground as a DC signal uh, and you're going to be able to read DC microamps with your multimeter in series between the flame rod and this wire. Once you have that signal it's actually going to be coming back through this ground slash common right here 
A lot of times if you follow this wire, it's going to go to the gas valve and also to the ground right near um, the, the combustion chamber. All right? But this is the, the wire, it sends it back through, um, on this board at least, and you're going to get that DC microamp reading. So if it does, if the board does receive DC microamp reading of somewhere around two to three uh, DC microamps or more on the board, then it will continue powering this gas valve, 24 volts in the common. So uh, after that, you have a blower motor on delay of about 30 seconds. After that, 30 seconds, and what it's doing during that 30 seconds is it's heating up the um, heat exchangers and it's going to preheat that air so when the blower motor turns on at heat right here, 120 volts comes out comes back to common and your blower motor is going to be able to push hot air right there. All right? So your blower motor speed is typically going to be your medium speed on a PSC blower motor, at least that's what this one was using, a PSC blower motor, and that would be your blue wire, all right, about the medium speed coming from here to your blower motor and coming back through your common. If you were powering cooling, uh, it would typically be a black wire or your higher fan speed and then it will go through your blower motor and come back through your common over here. This right here, you might have a common neutral um, block area right here. It's an L2 common neutral area. All right, so that, that covers the sequence of operation. If one of those items is not working, you're likely going to have a status code light. And uh, if your status code light is blinking on this one, it's a, it's a bright carrier pane one. So it'll be short flashes first, long flashes second and that will give you an error code. And you can line the error code up on usually the door of the furnace and it'll tell you where the problem could be. But just say you didn't have a status code light, you would need to know uh, what step you were on in the sequence of operation and, and to know, say, the next thing is not happening. Like for instance, if the inducer motor turns on and nothing happens after that, it could be the pressure switch this is what your pressure switch will look like, something either like this or like this, or maybe you might have uh, multiple pressure switches, all right? And they are just checking to make sure that your inducer motor is running and that you don't have a condensate clog, all right? So you gotta uh, check, you know, potentially that your condensate uh, tubes are clear and your, your trap is not overfilling and coming up into the furnace, all right? Right here, the orange and yellow wire, it could, be, it could be the pressure switch, or it could be the hot surface igniter is bad. Uh, the other thing it could be is the board is bad, uh, but it's not very likely that the board is bad. I'll tell you that it, the board does get misdiagnosed probably the most out of any component in, uh, in the furnaces, other than maybe now nowadays the uh, variable speed blur motor. But, um, but you want to be able to check the components and I've, I've put out quite a bit of videos uh, on each of the components in these 80 and 90 percent efficient furnaces so you can go ahead and check those out the individual testing of each of these components such as the inducer motor such as the hot surface igniter the pressure switch the flame rectification process thermostat wiring a couple uh, things that we didn't cover quite yet uh, if you wanted to test the board out, you can uh, turn the power on to the board and just quickly short from test to common, at least on this board right here. You want to follow your uh, manufacturer's instructions for doing these things. You just quickly uh, short that out and then take your jumper off and then uh, it'll run through some testing of some components, uh, but not all of them. So on this one, it will be the inducer motor, then the hot surface igniter, then the blower motor for heat, then the blower motor for cooling. But once again, you know, um, each board is different, so you want to read the manufacturer's instructions for how to test that out. All right, don't just test from, from a test to a common, you know, um, make sure you're following your instructions. Anyway, um, but that only tests four components, and, and those are some pretty easy uh, components to test. You know, your blower motor, uh, you can watch some of those videos on that, the hot surface igniter, that's pretty easy, you know, you just, uh, turn the power off to this board, um, isolate the hot surface igniter and take a resistance reading. If you should get somewhere between 40 and 60 ohms typically. If, if the hot surface igniter is hot, the resistance is going to be higher. The inducer motor, you know, you can just unplug that and take some resistance readings. Make sure that the 
that the hot and common are not shooting to ground, uh, make sure it spins freely, stuff like that. The other thing is you have some sensor wires right here. Uh, if, if these basically are broken, they are normally closed. It comes from here uh, and comes back through the other red wire and you have 24 volts going through there and it goes through high temp switches like your uh, plenum temp sensor and what that is is it's in the heat exchanger area and it's making sure that your furnace doesn't overheat. The other ones are say flame rollout sensors. Uh, if you have to manually reset a flame rollout sensor uh, that would not be a good thing. You shouldn't just continue to reset this. You want to see if the flame is actually blowing back to uh, the metal right here and that's what's making it trip or if it's just doing it due to say high heat or something like that uh, but uh, you don't want to just continually uh, reset manual um, safety switches like this so if the 24 volt signal stops between the one red wire and the other red wire then the, the sequence for operation will not even turn on so you can just test for that and you can do that by just putting your one on common and then the one on the red wire and then the other one on the red wire, you should get 24 volts on this, 24 volts on this. That means that all of your sensor wires are closed. All right, and you don't have to go and test them individually or waste time shutting the power off and, and uh, testing each one out individually, okay? The next thing is I just wanna go over the uh, thermostat wire right here. R is always 24 volts coming out. Uh, it's going to go to your thermostat and then it's going to come back to your common and that's what's going to power your digital thermostat. If your 24 volts comes out R and it comes back on G, then it'll tell your blower motor to go ahead and turn on. So you can confirm that you have a signal on G by just testing from G to common. That's when your blower motor should be on. If you have a 24 volt signal coming out R and coming back on Y, then that's going to tell your blower motor to turn on on your high speed, which will be for cooling. All right, and you can tell if that has a signal by just Y in common. You should have 24 to 28 and a half volts. Anytime anybody talks about 24 volts, they're talking about somewhere between 24 to 28 and a half. All right, if you have 24 volts coming off the R and coming back to the W, you can read that between W and common. That's 24 volts, and if you have that and your inducer motor is not turning on, then you could say, okay, we have a bad board, the sensors are intact, we've got a call for heat, and nothing's actually happening. Uh, that's, that's when you know that the board will be bad. All right, so you've got to really be careful. Make sure you're testing each of the components, and you really got to practice reading the schematic wiring diagram. The connection diagram is more for uh, wire placement and and how to wire a component in, which color wires to wire it into, but the schematic diagram will give you basically the voltage flow and how the system's operating. Uh, so you wanna practice each time you can to uh, read through those schematic diagrams, you know, in order to figure out how things work. Uh, but once you have that sequence operation down pretty, pretty cold, uh, then it's, this board is not so scary anymore, okay? So it's either doing its job or it's not doing its job. All right, and you got to just confirm that you know uh, how to test the components. All right, so that's that. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Cybertech Channel.